For the biology role model project, the scientist I chose is Jennifer Dona. She was born in Washington, D.C. on February 19, 1964. At a young age, Jennifer and her parents moved to Hilo, Hawaii due to a job opportunity that was given to her father. Her father is Mark Kirk Dona, and her mother is Dorothy Jean Williams. Her spouse, Jamie Kate, works as a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, where his research focuses on gene editing yeast. Her son, Andrew, is an undergraduate also at the University of California, Berkeley, studying electrical engineering and computer science. To start off with her interest in science, Jennifer Dana became involved in the field as a young girl growing up on the beautiful island, allowing Jennifer to appreciate nature and its beauty in its original form. Her intellectual curiosity about the biological life surrounding her inspired her to pursue a career in biochemistry and molecular biology. In addition, her interest and skills in science and mathematics throughout the school, as well as the convenience of science magazines lying over the home due to her father, biology became an essential part of her education and life. Her passion for understanding the depths of science led her to pursue secondary education. Jennifer graduated from Hilo High School in 1981. She then continued her learning as a freshman at Pomona College, which marked a challenging time in her life when she questioned her decision to major in biochemistry or French. However, with support from her peers and science professors, Jennifer continued her education in biochemistry, leading her to graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Biochemistry in 1985. Jennifer furthered her education at Harvard Medical School, graduating in 1989 with a PhD in Biological Chemistry and Molecular Pharmacology. However, despite the educational goals Jennifer achieved and the obstacles she, she overcame, she also made time to enjoy the habilitating activities in her day-to-day -day life. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, Jennifer enjoyed traveling and traveled every week. However, the shutdown for the disease had inhibited her from traveling to places. Therefore, she took up gardening and composting in her daily life. In addition to it, she started to read novels, science books, and non-science related books. These additions to her life during the pandemic brought her great satisfaction since there were habits that she lost but regained during quarantine. Despite the pandemic, Jennifer continued to pursue her goals and do the things she loves. She's currently a professor of biochemistry, biophysics, and structural biology at the University of California, Berkeley. There, she also founded and runs the Downer Lab and Innovative Genomics Institute. In the Downer Lab, the main areas of research that she is focused on and involved in are the structural makeup of RNA, understanding CRISPR-Cas and its related proteins, gaining knowledge of CRISPR's editing tools capacity, and the anti-CRISPR agents. In a recent journal article posted on October 3rd, 2023, Jennifer, graduate students, postdoctoral students, and her peers participated in the mitigation of chromosome loss in clinical CRISPR-Cas9 engineered T cells. In the image located in the center, the figure depicts four different panels of testing that they performed. In panel A, with the 20 little circles of purple and blue, the figure is showcasing the chromosome loss of 20 different genes in T cells. In panel B, the bluish orange green circle shows the percentage of cells in different clusters of the cell cycle. Relatedly, in panel C, the bar graph demonstrates the location of T cells during each of the cell cycle's markers. Lastly, the five line graphs in panel D identifies partial chromosome loss at the Cas9 track target site of T cells over a period of 21 days. The purpose of this part of the experiment is to identify that the technique and machine, CRISPR, can cause chromosome loss in T cells that can be in part of the different ways that genes are expressed, leading the genes to have overall less fitness. In all, the figure represents that when trying to target a gene in a genetically modified organism, CRISPR-Cas9 can allow chromosome loss in T cells, indicating concern to how it can affect research in gene editing. Jennifer and her team's work on gene editing in CRISPR relates to materials covered in class regarding our GMO team project. Throughout her career, Jennifer has received accomplishments for her work in the field. In 2018, she received the Kavli Prize in Nanoscience, and in 2020, she accepted the Wolf Prize in Medicine. Recently, Jennifer earned a Nobel Laureate in Chemistry in 2020 for the co-development of CRISPR, alongside her colleague Emmanuel Charpentier. Her next steps in research include her work at the University of California, Berkeley, in the Downer Lab, an innovative genomics institute where she's studying with students and peers on proteins and tools related to CRISPR-Cas9. A quality I most admire about my scientists is her dedication to science and passion for women and diversity in STEM and technology. Jennifer is an amazing scientist who encourages scientists of all ages and backgrounds to cope with failure and continue to reach for their dreams no matter their doubts. I admire Jennifer's work, which has advanced our knowledge in science and technology regarding her development in gene editing and CRISPR. As an aspiring female scientist, Jennifer is an inspiration to many, and her work in genome editing has inspired me to continue pursuing my interests in biology and medicine. Here are a list of references I use to make this presentation.
Thank you for listening. And for more information about Jennifer's work, please check out the Downa's Lab Twitter account at Downa underscore lab.